The entire world has been watching the developments in Japan with tremendous sorrow and obviously deep concern. And naturally, there's a great focus right now on issues related to nuclear safety. Joining us now from, Mos from Moscow with more on that is our senior international correspondent, Matthew Chance. And Matthew, you've been talking to the International Atomic Energy Agency about uh, this ongoing crisis in Fukushima. Latest news that another reactor is overheating, and that makes it the third one at Fukushima. What have you been hearing from your people at the IAEA? Well, the IAEA aren't necessarily the quickest with uh, information about what the developments are on the ground. That's very much coming from the Japanese nuclear authorities. But there's a, there's a trust problem with the Japanese. Many people in Japan know that, it, that, 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 that officials there have underplayed the significance of uh, nuclear accidents in the past, and they're worried the same may be true this time. And so the UN's nuclear watchdog agency is fulfilling uh, this role of, of giving you know, accurate, verified information. It's been giving us some more information within the past few hours uh, about you know, further details about that second explosion at the Fukushima uh, reactor. Uh, it says it took place at 11 o'clock in the morning local time in Japan and was caused, up, uh, caused rather by a buildup of, uh, of hydrogen gas in the reactor building. Uh, but the agency confirms that the primary containment vessel, the area where the actual nuclear fuel is stored was not damaged by that explosion. So that's been a point of major concern. So it's good that the, the IAEA uh, say that they verified that that containment vessel has not been damaged. They did say, though, that six people in that blast um, were injured. Uh, there's been a lot of concern, obviously, on the ground, particularly in the exclusion uh, area around the reactor, but also in Japan generally, as well as the wider world, about what the effect of these explosions are. The IAEA has some uh, information on that. It's saying that the measurements of radiation at various points around the Fukushima plant are said to be normal at the moment. And so uh, they're apparently agreeing with the Japanese nuclear uh, officials on the ground there that this is not causing, at the moment, a major problem with nuclear contamination, Andrew. It's, it's interesting because, as you say, uh, this tallies with what the Japanese have been uh, telling the media, uh, Matthew, but uh, there is a, a, an issue about trust there. Is the IAEA, does it feel like it has to put pressure on the Japanese uh, authorities to actually get this information out? Is it, or are they finding that the cooperation is quite, uh, quite easy? Um, it's difficult to say. I mean, it, it seems that there is a, a free flow of information uh, between... Um, the Japanese nuclear officials on the ground, the experts in the field actually dealing with this, uh, and the, the IAE team of experts that are based in their Vienna headquarters. They also have uh, experts on the ground in Japan as well. Uh, but what the, what the IAEA are doing is they're taking the information they're getting from the uh, Nuclear and Industrial Safety Agency, as it's called in Japan. They're verifying it themselves through their own channels, their own network of experts, and then putting it out as verified information. They're also, Andrew, saying that they are prepared and are in a good position, in fact, to offer additional expertise uh, to the Japanese nuclear officials who are on the ground, uh, you know, field engineers, nuclear experts, who could perhaps uh, give their expertise in trying to bring this nuclear situation uh, under control. But uh, so far, according to IA officials that I've spoken to, no, no requests from Japan for extra help in that regard have been, uh, have been given.